All right, so today I am going to go into a little rant about pricing yourself as a freelancer. But in all seriousness, we do need to get paid on a regular basis and we need to charge accordingly. So there are several ways of doing this. There are several schools of thought, so to speak, uh, about how to get paid for certain jobs. Now, first of all, let me just go ahead and uh, just tell you those three to four -ish ways of doing it. The first way is, you know, day rates right day rates we all get you know whenever you work in studios or for production house a team of creatives there's usually a, a day rate that is applied um that is like all right i work for eight to ten hours a day for x amount of money for that day then there's things like your hourly rate this comes into play you know if you work remote or if you're only in you know someone's studio for a few hours or, or whatever that is let's say Susie's sew shop comes to you and says Hey, Cameron, I've seen your work. It's great. You think you can design me a logo? Sure, I can do that. Is usually your response. You say sort of half-heartedly because you know what the next questions are going to be. You got to talk about money, right? You got to talk about money because money is the transaction of business. It's how you communicate as a business. So how do you approach this? Do you ask for a budget or do you say your price? Um, and I keep going back and forth about this, honestly, because it's a tricky thing and I've played with both ways. So let me just kind of go over which one of those things, uh, each, each, let me just go over each one of those things. So to say a budget be like, all right, Susie Sew Shop comes to me and she says, all right, Cameron, I need a logo. I'm like, great. And I say, what's your budget? They can this this conversation can either go one of two ways, and they could either be like, "Oh, well, I have five thousand dollars for you to do this logo," or "I have five hundred dollars to do this logo," or "I have twenty thousand dollars to do this logo." Whatever that may be, the pros of doing it this way is to sort of gauge how much money and how much they think something like this costs. Some people just have no idea how much something like this costs. And so they might say something like, oh, I have a hundred bucks. Well, you know, if this thing takes me two to three days to just develop three or four different logos, I mean, that's a hundred bucks for three days. That's less than minimum wage. Um, but, you know, they could say something like $10,000. All right, you know, now we're talking a little bit more. So another thing you can do is actually just to say a price. So Susie's Sew Shop comes to me, she wants a logo. And then I say, all right, well, I do logos typically for businesses like you between the, you know, $5,000 and $10,000 range. How does that sound to you? And with this method, you can usually gauge what the other person is thinking. They might be thinking, oh man, this is too much. Or they might be like, cool, you know, and there you have your answer. So it really just depends on your comfort level, first of all do you are you comfortable saying a price and you may have been doing this for so long like i have a buddy of mine who does designs and he actually has like a one sheet where he says all of his prices like here it is a la carte you know you get a logo you get a web design all for x amount of money you know um and it really just it also depends on the size of your client coca-cola is going to cost more than Susie So Shop. That's just the reality of it. Um, because Coca Cola has a whole bunch of money, and what they invest in you, they're going to get a return on their investment. And you want to do the same thing with Susie So Shop. I'm going to stop saying Susie So Shop because it's a tongue twister. But Susie So Shop might only be a you know three hundred thousand dollar a year business, which is small for a business that has overhead and stuff like that. So for them to only spend, you know, for them to spend three to ten thousand dollars on a logo design and a branding design is it, it could be a lot of money for them but someone like coca-cola ten thousand dollars they might even look at you because that's not enough money to be taken seriously so you really need to start thinking about that uh when clients approach you if you know you really want to kind of gauge the client and price the client out i'm not saying coca-cola is going to come to any of you guys but they do make sure you're ready um, so yeah, the two school of thoughts for me, at least direct to client work is to either ask for a budget, which I think if you're starting off is a good thing to do because you might not have any idea 
what budgets are for marketing and design in a particular area. Say you want to get into haberdasheries, which is a sewing shop, right? Uh, if you want to market to, uh, you know, haberdasheries in the, the South, you don't know what their marketing budget is. So you just have to ask for a budget. Play with this a couple of times and you'll kind of know what people are feeling as far as like how much money they want to spend on that. And eventually you'll learn that, oh, all these type of businesses don't want to pay a lot of money for a logo. So I either won't work with them or I'll try to get creative with it. Um, so I would say do that a few times to really just sort of gauge uh, the expectations to sort of get in your own mind how much you should be charging for stuff like that. If you think, all right, you know, a client came to me, she said she only had $1,000 for a logo. I took the job because I needed the money and I had the time. Why not? It took me a week to do, you know, plus, you know, three rounds of revisions. You can kind of break down the hourly and see how much you made. If you only made 15 bucks an hour, it might not have been worth it. And you'll learn for next time how much to charge. So there's the say a price method, right? Where, you know, a client comes to you and they're like, I need something done. I need a motion design video. All right. I start off doing motion design videos at $5,000. Do you have that? And it goes up depending on complexity. $10,000 if you want 3D, $20,000 if you want to hire voiceover and talent and have your music orchestrated, that sort of thing. You really just have to have tiers, you know? So you, I basically sort of, when I do those kind of jobs, I give a range. So $20,000 if you want something that's top notch, we get some voiceover artists, we get an illustrator on board, we get a designer on board, and I'll animate it for you. You know, $5,000 if you just want to get some stock elements and we make this thing real quick and simple and knock it out in a couple of weeks. So you just got to know where you are and you might have to figure out where you are and how much things cost by asking for budgets in the beginning. So with that said, I would say experiment with either A, asking for a budget or B, saying a price. I would experiment with the first one first, uh, depending on where you are in your career and who your target is market is if you're working with art directors and creative directors and people who deal with creative people a lot they'll have an idea of budgets they know about how much a budget is um, for certain particular things so you can't be too sneaky unless you're just awesome and you've done this before and when it comes to a direct client work i would probably prefer to say a budget experiment with it at first if you're just getting started out you know and you're starting with smaller businesses you know don't lowball yourself, but also don't go too high where you scare them off. And always be flexible depending on what you need done because you still need to build up your portfolio if you're just starting off. Um, yeah, I would say that jump into that and you know we can discuss a little bit right now about day rates. I would say, you know, as you're starting off, I don't know too many day rates about you know certain industries, but I knew it like I know it like on my side with video. And with design and illustration, typically at the beginning of your career, you're going to be starting off around 400 bucks a day, depending on the market you're in. But now, right now, the market is remote. It's everywhere. And a lot of people aren't really doing day rates anymore unless you're getting hired out of California where they have laws that I don't understand, but apparently they have to enforce the laws and you have to always be on a day rate even if you don't work there. It's weird. I'm not going to get into all of that. Either way. The day rate is sort of the the old school studio standard that's been around forever. So I say if you're working in a place that has, you know, a lot of studios to choose from, you're probably going to be starting off in that 400 a day range for an eight to 10 hour day. And as you get up, you know, say you're a mid, a junior level to mid level professional, you're probably going to be in the 500 to $600 range per day. And then, you know, you increase it as you get better and better. So I'd say a senior editor, senior motion designer can charge anywhere from 700 to 800 a day. Now, how that translates to remote work, that's usually hourly. So I, for the last few years, I've been charging about 100 bucks an hour, uh, depending on the client and how the length of the project. And lately, I've been trying to move more into project-based pricing. So instead of doing things by the hour, I do it by the job. So a client comes to me, they're like, Cameron, we need this thing animated. All right, great. Um, you know, what are we looking like here? What kind of, what kind of, what kind of job is this? And they explain to me the details. I get a creative brief, all that sort of thing. I was like, all right, well, I can do this probably for 
X, Y, Z or whatever, you know, just kind of depends. Everything just kind of depends. Not every project is the same, but it's usually based off, if it's clients I've worked with in the past, it's usually based off that hourly rate or that old school day rate. Um, that's just because the clients I work with are used to that. Now, if it's a new client, I'll try to experiment with certain pricing. And if it's a direct to client job, I'll definitely, you know, try to say a price just to kind of get it in their heads where we're heading for this so they know how much they need to spend for a good quality product. Now I've rambled on way too long about this. I hope you found this, you know, somewhat educational. I didn't really write anything formal out for this talk. I just wanted to kind of lay out some pricing tips and points about what you should be doing as a freelancer. So there's basically just three ways of thought here. There is the day rate and the hourly rate, which is more of like, hey, you work for me X amount of days, X amount of hours and I'll pay you this much because this is how much we have allocated for this job. And this usually is for things like working in studios or ad agencies where they usually have a breakdown of the production schedule. They have line items and they, and for you, for your particular role, they've line item, they put you in a line item at, you know, 500 bucks a day or 800 bucks a day, and they still need to make profit off your time. Let's face it. You're just a tool for whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. So, that's just the nature of it. It's a business thing. Don't take it. Don't take it personally. And the next thing is, you know, to ask for a budget. So if someone comes to you, they want something, you ask for a budget. You just say, hey, how much do you have to, to make this work? And they say, oh, I have ten thousand dollars. But if we can do it for seven thousand, that'll be great. That'll make my boss really happy. So you try to work within that and just be, you know, a team player when it comes to that. And the third thing is to say a price because some people have no idea how much something costs or they have a price in their head and you want to sort of gauge their expectations because they're trying to negotiate as well. So we're all, they're all just trying to go negotiate and try to try to get profit, trying to run a business efficiently. And you need money on top of the money you spent uh, to actually keep businesses afloat. And you want to make sure everybody's playing fair. All this is just a bunch of uh, pricing talk. And I hope you really found it to be educational. And I, I'm, I'm, Happy to talk about it some more in a deeper capacity for each one. If you have any questions, I can deep dive into it a little bit more as well. And I plan on definitely having it more structured whenever I create my freelance course. So if you want to sign up for the email newsletter, I'll have a link below and you can sign up for the newsletter. I'll be talking about stuff like this. I'll talk about portfolios, how to handle clients, how to do stuff like stuff with your money, like taxes and retirement, all that stuff. Um, I'll provide it in the link below and that's more to come. And I, I really appreciate if you sign up and stay sort of on the heartbeat of that because I'm pretty excited about it. I'm looking forward to teaching you guys all that stuff. So feel free to leave a comment, send me a message, cam at canthemanking.com. I look forward to hearing from you, answering all your questions. I love helping you guys out. Um, yeah, have a great day.